Hi guys, this is part four, I think. So, um, I noticed something, uh, in the last video where I was talk showing the IPG2 last part, um, there were several things I noticed as I was watching back. Um, the 63 I'm going to show you what that is tied to in just a minute. And, uh, not only did the, the capstone get knocked off of the pyramid, but the whole pyramid came down. And that's been, I've covered this before, that that's been depicted in the Transformers movies. There's also one of the, um, uh, what are they called? The bad robots. Um, one of them is a scorpion in the movie, but anyway, the, they tear off, tear apart one of the pyramids of Giza because inside of it is the transformer that that is going to allow the evil to come from the heavens so you guys none of this stuff is coincidental anyway um i remember that you know their logo is depicting a solar eclipse this would be like um the earth going in front of the sun or, i'm sorry the moon going in front of the sun depicting a solar eclipse and then of course there's this so this could be the Antichrist figure that's coming forth once the sun gets eclipsed. Um, is that the sun going dark, not giving its light, going down at noontime? I don't know. But look what is happening on December 15th. And remember I showed you that on um, the 17th is when around 17th, 18th, and even up to the 21st, the sun is still right there. The sun and Mercury are still across from the stinger of Scorpio. And on December 15th, which is in that time frame, because as, as of today, it's already entered into um, the constellation, as you saw in the last video. But there will be a total solar eclipse on December 15th, and... It's going to happen over South America. This will be where the totality will be here. Um, Argentina, Chile. And, um, which is interesting because, you know, right down below is Antarctica. And for those of you who have been following anything regarding the Planet X, you know, there's an observatory down there. Uh, no one's allowed to travel there. The, the countries that are allowed to go there have had to sign an agreement. In other words, there's stuff down there that you can see that they don't want the rest of us knowing about. So here's a total solar eclipse. I mean, is that connecting to this and, and what I just showed with him, with the Antichrist figure waking up? I don't know, but I don't think it's a coincidence. So let me show you something in regards to the number 63 that I pointed out, which is interesting. And it has to do with a Strong's number. I couldn't help but notice it was there because I had already looked up this. Because in Haggai 2, it mentions the 21st day of the 7th month. And then later on in the chapter, it mentions the 24th day of the 9th month, which is when the, the seed is in the barn. And f the time frame between those two dates... Of Tishri 21. Tishri 21 landed on October 8th, which is 8 8. October being the original 8th month, which was an 8 8 day tied to Back to the Future. I mean, everything's connected. Everything from October 8th, which was Tishri 21, mentioned in Haggai 2, to December 10th, which is Kislev 24, the next date mentioned in Haggai 2, is 63 days. So I'm like, I looked up what the meaning of 63 was in the Strong's, and it means it's um, it means a meadow of acacia. And for those of you who know what the acacia wood is, it is the wood that the Ark of the Covenant was made of, and lots of different um, things, uh, tables, the 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 table of incense, the table of showbread, all the other wood that was used for the poles going around the tabernacle, all were made of acacia wood. And this means Abel, of course, being Cain's brother that was murdered. Um, Abel means meadow, and this is uh, acacia, a meadow of acacias. 
and in the Greek, it means to abide in the field, to live in the fields, be under the open sky, even at night. This is a reference to the tabernacle, the tabernacle, the wilderness. They had to abide in tabernacles under the open sky. their time during the wilderness, which is tied to the Feast of Tabernacles, because the whole reason they observed the Feast of Tabernacles is to remember that they had to stay in a temporary dwelling, a tent, while they were in the wilderness, under the open sky. As a matter of fact, that's one of the requirements to building the sukkah. You have to leave the sky open so you can see the stars, to re remember that, your, that the children of Israel, your fathers, your forefathers, had to abide in the tabernacles. And then, of course, the living in the fields, shepherds do this. This is all tied to the Feast of Tabernacles, and the acacia wood is tied to Yeshua. He is the tabernacle. Everything that Moses was instructed to build regarding the tabernacle was as a type and shadow of Jesus, of Yeshua. And then the acacia tree that the wood they had to come from, this is, hang on, let me fix the thing. These are images of acacia trees that are in the Sinai wilderness, exactly where they were when they were told to build the ark, and they had to build things from the acacia uh, wood. And guess what? This tree here, here's one next to the tabernacle. I think I believe this is a an image of the um, tabernacle that is a simile that is actually built in Israel. Okay, I had to go answer the door. My brother stopped by, so, um, I know he was showing, okay, the tabernacle, this is an actual replica that is built in Israel. Um, that is probably an acacia tree. But it's just amazing when you look at these pictures how the ones that grow in the desert they just grow out of the, you know, just sand. There's nothing else around, but these trees just pop up all by themselves. I mean, if, you know, of course the Lord meant it to be that way, but um, look at what the tree... has. This is probably the tree that was used to make the crown of thorns. Because there was a picture in here, I guess it was in the other. Um, thorns, so you can see that they, this tree has very long thorns on it. So, no doubt, this was the tree that was used to make the crown of thorns that was placed upon our Savior's head during his crucifixion. One of these pages had an image of a crown of thorns. I don't remember which actual page it was on, but if you go look it up, you'll find it. But you see the long thorns on the tree. So anyway, uh, the number 63 in Strong's having to do with uh, a meadow of acacias, a meadow, meaning a whole meadow. In most of these pictures, there's just one single tree. So, um, again, uh, 63 meaning the meadow of acacias in the Hebrew, and then abiding in a field under an open sky, which has to do, both of these have to do with the tabernacle in the wilderness, which has to do with our Savior, which has to do with the Feast of Dedication, Hanukkah, Second Tabernacles, 63 days from the 21st day of Tishri, or the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, not the last great day, but the last day, 63 days between that day and the 24th day of the ninth month, both dates mentioned in Haggai 2. So, I just love sharing these things with you because they're so amazing. It's not coincidence. 
Okay, so going back to the calendar, um, uh, so what we just covered with, um, the 24th day of the ninth month, um, Tishri 14, December 10 is, um, here are the, I'll, I'll let you guys pause and you can go over these. Um, here are the Strong's meanings. It means a grape harvest to bind or swathe in linen or grave clothes. <laughs> uh, which, uh, that's amazing that in the Greek 1210, which is December 10th, that that's what it means because look, it lines up with the mirror image of Passover. And of course, our Lord was bound in linen clothes, grave clothes. And then for the old Roman, um, 1010, which is what the watches depict. It means the house of Baal. This is just another name for the fallen cherub. Um, and it also means counselor. Um, and then as, as I showed here, mentioned in Haggai 2, the barn is in the storehouse. So is it possible that the first fruits are gone no later than this day? According to what scripture is saying, it is very possible, but doesn't mean it will happen. Um, and then the 11th, which would be equivalent to the first day of Hanukkah, or the first day of Tabernacles, if you're using the Tishri pattern. So, um, the dates here, 12-11 for December 11th, means an onion, and it's only mentioned in Numbers 11-5, and it was in regards to when the Israelites were complaining because they wanted to go back to Egypt where they had the leeks and the melons and the onions, all the good food that they left behind in Egypt. These were those who turned around like Lot's wife. They looked back to the world and wanted, they lusted after the world instead of um, trusting in God. So it's interesting that it falls on the first day of Hanukkah because as I said earlier that I believe this week may, may be a, a time frame for unbelieving Jews in Israel to come to Christ after an event happens. I don't know. That's just me speculating. I don't know if that will happen and that, you know, according to these dates or not. Um, but it's interesting because Tishri 22, which is Shemini Aseret, the last great day, the eighth day, which is in between the 22 and the 23 time frame, if that's what this week represents, then it is now winter and it's the 10th month has begun on this day, on December 18th, According to Enoch calendar, it's the first day of the 10th month when Esther goes into the king's house and she has to undergo the purification. That would make total sense that these are people who have come to Christ who beforehand did not believe until they saw in the clouds and mourned for the one whom they pierced and then they flee to the wilderness and now they have to go through their purification process, which will probably be for a year. That ties in line with, well, I don't want to go there, but anyway, um, that just fits. So I don't know if that's how it will happen or not, but, um, um, and then we have, uh, December 17th, which is the first day of winter on Enoch Torah calendar. Of course, it doesn't say that on Torah calendar, but on the Enoch calendar, it's the, the winter solstice on the 17th. And, um, these Strong's meanings, um, oh, sorry, back up to December 11th. In the Greek, it means indeed, now, verily, or truly, like when Yeshua would speak in the King James and he would say, truly, truly, I tell you, or verily, verily. He was trying to emphasize that I'm telling you the truth, believe it, right now. And in the 1011 in Hebrew, it's a house of a creative one. The house, the house of the king. Um, creative meaning creator. And in the Greek, it means consult, counsel, determine, or deliberate. So I'm out of time again. Oh, 15 minutes goes by fast. So I will see you in the next part because I really want to finish this up so you guys can pause and study it to your advantage. So I will see you then. Shalom.